Hello and welcome back to Business Statistics. Today we're doing Chapter 5, which is Probability. Probability is a lot of fun, a lot of formulas in this chapter, but hopefully we'll go through it quickly and get you through it. Now, probability is studied in statistics, mainly for businesses to try to predict uh, what the uh, results might be or the demand. So if a business owner stocked up on, say, turkey sandwiches for the weekend, but um, the demand was for ham and cheese, we use probability uh, in order to determine what um, he might be expected to sell over the weekend. So um, some terms that you might want to be familiar with in this chapter are random experiment, which is um, the process where the results uh, cannot be known ahead of time. There's a space, um, a sample space for the possible outcomes that are known. Uh, the, an example of, uh, say, a rolling a dice, the sample space would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, because there are six uh, possible outcomes in a dice. But if um, that dice, uh, if you were to have two dice instead, that uh, sample space would equate to 6 squared. So it's going to be equals 36. So an event is a subset of outcomes of that sample space. So um, if, uh, if, say, we did uh, a toss of uh, heads and tails on a coin, the event is going to be either heads or tails. Now, a compound event is going to be two events or more. And probability is basically going to be the number of times that event occurs. So the way we write that is the probability of A is going to be equal to P for probability and a, capital A for your um, event. So it's going to be P open parentheses, A, close parentheses. Now, there are three approaches to uh, probability. Those are empirical, which is the estimated um, uh, times of an outcome uh, that would happen, classical, which is going to be a priori by nature, and uh, subjective, which is based on opinion. So the empirical approach is um, the frequency of number of outcomes is counted. And the way we would do this is I have a quick example in Excel of how to figure, um, say, number of homework assignments. So if we were to look at the number of homework assignments that um, for this class that you need to do uh, so that you can pass, we would say the probability of A, and write it this way, is equal to the number of missing homework assignments divided by the total homework assignments. So in this case, it's going to be 5 divided by 10, which is going to be equals to 1 half, which is going to be about 50%. More likely or not, you're probably not going to pass with just 50% of the homework assignments then. Here there's also uh, the law of large numbers that you want to become familiar with. The more trials you do, the more you reach the limit. So if you have a coin handy, flip it now and count how many tails and how many heads you get, say if you run it 10 times. Maybe the first you get three tails, one head, but the more times you flip it, it's more likely you'll get the same number of tails as the number of heads. Now there's a good YouTube on this called Probability Two Coins Are Tossed by Don't Memorize that might be useful when doing homework assignments on this one. And then there's the uh, complement of an event, which is basically everything in the space except the, the event. So the way we would write that is the probability of A plus the probability of A hyphen is equal to 1. While the union of that event is basically all the outcomes of that event. We would write that A union B. There's also the joint probability, which is the chance of both events occurring. So that's A intersection B. There's a good YouTube on this called Joint Probability by the Career Force you might want to check out as well. Now, the general law of addition is basically the union of two events. So the sum of the probability minus the intersection, we would write it as P A probability of A union B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus that intersection. So the probability of A intersection B. There's also the special law of addition. So if A and B are exclusive, the probability of A intersection B would equal to zero. So where their intersection is zero. So the probability 
of A union B is going to be equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. And then the collective exhaustive events happen if their union is the entire space, while the conditional probability is the probability that one event will occur if the second has occurred. The way we would write that is probability of, K, of A given B is going to be equals to the probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B. I know, lots of formulas here, but they will make more sense once you get into the homework. Now there is a good YouTube on conditional probability by Brightstorm that you might want to check out while doing the homework to get more detail on these. There's also the general law of multiplication. And so the joint probability of two events, we would write them as probability of A intersection B, which is equals to the probability of A given B times the probability of B. And then there is the 5-9 rule. So the, um, the way the 5-9 rule works is it, it explains how high you have to go to make it reliable. So say the cable company uh, normally needs a 99.999% reliability rate for you to remain their customer. Otherwise, if it doesn't work, you're going to go somewhere else. While for um, the airline industry, their main concern is to get you from point A to point B safely. So, for example, for their luggage system, they only require a 99% reliability that they will get your luggage there. Unfortunately for a lot of us, we have lost luggage, so we know how that works. Now, the final part of uh, this chapter is talks about tree diagrams, and I wanted to walk you through a quick example of how to do that. So given that uh, we have certain amount of data given to us, uh, here we're looking at bonds uh, versus stocks and what they yield. So say for um, a low yield bond, we are getting 11%, uh, but we wanna know what the probability would be of getting a low yield bond given this data. So the way you would work this out is you sum the columns by simply pressing the sum button right here. And that will sum the, the column for you. And then the probability of say a, a, a low yielding bond is gonna be that number right here divided by the total of, for that column. So when we do that, we get 11 over 21, which is equal to 0.52. So about 50% probability that you're going to get a low yield bond given this data right here. Now, if we wanted to do the same to, to save with a medium um, yield stock, what we would do is simply take that number. So equals nine divided by the total of that column, which is 23. And we would get about 39% or close to 40% chance that you would get a medium yield bond, uh, stock. And the final thing in this uh, chapter is Bayes' theorem. So Bayes' theorem is going to basically be um, written by the formula of the probability given A is equal to the probability of A given B times the probability of B divided by the probability of A. I know, lots, <laughs> lots of uh, complicated formulas here, but it's actually not that bad. Uh, there is a quick YouTube on this called the Quick Proof of Bayes' Theorem. Uh, by 3 blue 1, that it's going to give you a little more detail on this, um, on this, on the base theorem and how to work that out, that one out. So that's it for now. Uh, I hope you can join me for chapter six next week. Have a good one. Enjoy. Bye-bye.